Good morning everybody and once again welcome to the video. This video I'll be demonstrating a nice application, a search functionality with semantic search for indeed job searching. Now what is semantic search? We'll cover that in a second but let's go over the, the slides quickly. I'll try my best to introduce myself in short and then we'll proceed with a small demo. My name is Saumil Shah. I work as a software engineer and I hold a bachelor's in electronic and a double master's in electrical and computer engineering. In my free time, I love to teach people on YouTube and share valuable insights about Elasticsearch, AWS and all the other amazing frameworks and technology. I've also published two amazing articles on LinkedIn, which essentially shows how we got 80 times faster search results from Elasticsearch, a case study. And then we have also developed a fully uh, automated data ingestion pipeline for which ingests currently about 1.2 terabyte worth of data using step functions. What is semantic search? We hear this buzzword around everywhere. What is semantic? Well, semantic search is a data searching technique in which a search query aims not only to find keywords, but to determine the intent and the contextual meaning of the, of the word a person is using to search. A very amazing example here that I wanted to demonstrate is Amazon. Here I'm searching for the word, hey, I'm looking for an iPhone case which is strong, durable, um, and I, I, I enter that into a keyword. I, I put that into the, in, into the search and I, and I clicked um, search and I got iPhone. That is amazing because now it understood the context, what I'm trying to search, and it suggested me relevant result. Now, those days where you used to type the exact word iPhone, like those days are gone. Uh, search engines have been become more and more um, smarter and they have been recommending much more better than before, right? Uh, now, let me show you the actual demo, right? So, uh, for example, we'll go on the Indeed website, right? I'm on Indeed, as you can see, uh, I'll share my screen quickly. Here I'm on the Indeed website and for example, I'm trying to search for this word. So let's see what Indeed is recommending. I'm looking for jobs on Python developer with AWS and Elasticsearch skill. I copy this, I dump this into the, the search box and let's try to search. Well, not exactly what I'm looking for. I just got two results and the search seems to be broken, right? Uh, this could be fixed uh, using a, a, a using semantic search, right? Now let me show you a small demo that I have that I have, right? So I'm using a sentence transformer here in Python. And again, we'll go over the code and all that shortly. It's there on my GitHub, so don't worry about the code, okay? So let me, yeah. So here, uh, as you can see, we have installed the library. We have installed all the uh, libraries and plugins. We do, did our import. We read the data set. This is the data set, which is, can be found on the Kaggle. I have downloaded the data set from Kaggle. I made a class that will convert these um, job description into token, which will understand the nuance of it, right? After that, we'll talk about the mapping in a second. I'm using a 384 dimension vector. Uh, I did, I create an index and then essentially I ingested my data. Now, now it's time for the magic, right? So let me do the same search. Right? I'm gonna do enter the search or query. Look at the magic guys. Python developer, it understood the nuance of what I'm trying to search. I said I'm looking for a I'm looking for a job in Python developer. So it gave me jobs related to Python. That's very, very smart, right? Um, it also gave me search engine optimized specialist. This is insane because it also understood Elasticsearch and it understood that Elasticsearch is related to search optimization. This is the power of Elasticsearch, semantic search, right? That I'm trying to propose. So uh, back, back again, going back to my slides, uh, this is how the ingestion pipeline would look like. You will have a route 53 where the job, anytime a job is posted, you will essentially call the API. The API would essentially invoke a microservice or an API gateway. A API gateway will dump the record into SQS and return a token. Uh, the Lambda would take the messages from the queue at a leisurely pace. It will do a long polling. Once the Lambda is gonna take the message, it's gonna, uh, convert those job descriptions into token, right? And then it will further pass into Logstash pipeline and then to Elasticsearch. We'll essentially create time-based indices, indices so that, uh, you know, we could essentially query the data much more efficiently. A monthly index or a daily index would be a, a, the best way to go for this application. Now, moving forward, uh, so assuming, let's say, this, these are some rough estimation, uh, let's say about, you know, data that indeed might be receiving, and I'm simply proposing what, uh, how many data nodes do we need and how, how everything looks like, right? 
So over here, uh, let's say we are, they are receiving 100 GB of data per day uh, and they, uh, they want to keep the data for 30 days uh, uh, in the hot zone, right? And they have a 64 GB RAM, right? So considering my math and calculation, we put this into formula. So they will be expecting about 6,000 GB of data. Uh, this is the amount of data that they're going to get. Total storage will be around, uh, we add the watermark and the threshold that would come out 7,500 gigabytes. They would roughly need about five data nodes, uh, right? They would need five data nodes. Um, and again, uh, if they want to do stuff in the warm zone, this is the this is how many data nodes they are looking at. So if I put all these things in the, in, in the in the in the cost calculator, uh, as you can see, uh, I'm using five data nodes here. Um, uh, uh, assuming they have a 64 GB RAM and 32 cores of vCPU, so you can always increase that. Um, I'm using three master node. It is always advisable to use a three dedicated master nodes. Uh, then essentially, you know, uh, I'm defining my storage, 60 terabyte. You can have uh, whatever instances you would like. So on an average, you're looking at around $18,500 per month to spend on the entire stack. Now, a company like Indeed, of course, they are public. It is fine for them, right? So for two, for two uh, environment, that is QA and prod, they'll be looking at $36,000. Roughly $35,000 per month they would be spending, uh, right? And if you multiply... Again, $35,000 time 12. So they are looking at roughly $420,000 to spend annually on the entire stack. Now, again, uh, again, I want to show you this. Uh, it is very, very, very important to essentially optimize the indices. For example, uh, just to show you the mapping, right, what I was trying to talk about. So over here, um, you know, uh, okay, at this point, right, I define my uh, index as KNN, right? And I and 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 then for all these other uh, other stuff that I don't want to search, I say index as false. Just doing that uh, for 500 samples, I was able to get uh, the size was 1.6 megabyte. Versus if you don't define the mapping, everything will be a keyword, and which will cost you 4.8 megabytes for 500 documents. You'll say not a big deal, right? 500 documents, but when you multiply this by 50 million documents, that's the size you're looking at. So 480 gigabytes versus 160 gigabytes, adding replicas to it, one terabyte versus 320 gigabytes. As you can see, you, ha you have saved massively on the, on, on the storage, right? Just by optimizing these mappings, right? So that's my, uh, so, uh, that's my suggestion, you know, when, when implementing, always optimize these mappings. Another suggestion I would um, provide is essentially when, uh, if you want to increase the ingestion throughput, the best way would be essentially let Elasticsearch determine the document ID. If you uh, provide a document ID, it is a little bit more expensive, right? Uh, but this is the uh, this is the example that was given on a YouTube video, which was demonstrated by PayPal. They increased their ingestion throughput by two million documents per minute just by having Elasticsearch select their own document size, right? Another thing, choose a longer refresh interval or set the refresh interval to negative one, uh, right? This will help you to increase your ingestion uh, throughput, right? But um, yeah, take a look at this. Uh, I defined the mapping and, and now uh, I can, you know, it understand the context, for example, just for this search, right? I'm looking for a job on Python developer with AWS and Elasticsearch. It gave me Python developer jobs to apply. It gave me search specialist because Elasticsearch is related to search, right? Search engine optimization specialist, it gave me that, right? Uh, software engineer, senior engineer, you see how smart the search is. So take a look at what we had here on the website. When I type this word, I literally got two and, and I'm not getting any more result. But with semantic search, this search could be much more improved, right? So it's all I'm saying. Then we, it can also go through a ranking system where you can rank the particular documents on the top. So for example, a customer who paid more for the job can can go on the top and then the, uh, or depending upon the model, right? Or you can rank based on the, on the cost, uh, based on the clicks, right? If a particular job has more clicks, show that job on the top, show this job on the bottom. You can rank all these stuff, right? So that is the power of Elasticsearch. Uh, essentially that you can bring, right? So uh, if indeed uh, had to implement semantics, or this is how they would have implemented, converting essentially all these um, entity into vector and building auxiliary index, which means, uh, you know, all their existing index will stay as it is. We are not touching that at all. But what they can do is they can build complementary uh, auxiliary index, right? 
in that index all they would have is the primary id of this document and the vector right so now you're only searching on the vector index and then you can query your auxiliary index back to get the document right that's also one way to do it right uh, now again I, I i i just wanted to show a demo here the power of elastic search and semantic search right now think about all the possibilities right i haven't done stemming uh, stemming and removing stop words and other thing right so you could also re uh, remove stop words and all these other things from job description and then convert into vectors and uh, there's a lot 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 more you can do with this right but i wanted to give you an overview on how i did it right you essentially put the mappings another small suggestion i would like to provide is uh, this parameters right the lower this number uh, the size will be smaller, but your accuracy will suffer. Suffer higher this number, the size will be bigger, but uh, your performance will suffer, right? So it is very important for us to have a, a nice balance. So you want to test all these things out, and then you want to do all that, right? Uh, and the query here is pretty easy: query bull must. So I'm saying, uh, whenever anybody will essentially, you know, search for something on Indeed. For example, whenever something goes in this watch section, you will convert that into a vector and that vector will be passed through on the query and then you do, um, you know, KNN and you get the appropriate best uh, job, job, uh, jobs that are jobs for the job seeker that they can apply for. Thank you so much for uh, seeing my presentation. And if you have any more questions, please list your question in the comments. Um, this entire Jupyter notebook with the code and the sample data set is there on my GitHub section. The links are in the description. With that being said, if you have any more questions on this particular semantic search, kindly put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer that question. Thank you so much and see you guys in the next video.